welcome back. In August 1992, the eyes of the nation were firmly fixed on the Barcelona Olympics, where Ireland's boxers were doing the country proud. None more so than Dubliner Michael Carruth, whose stunning welterweight victory gave Ireland its first Olympic gold medal since Ronnie Delaney in 1956. And it's great to have the Olympic legend himself here this morning. Good morning, Michal. Hello, how are you guys? Hi, Michael. Thanks Can you believe no that it's almost 25 years? Oh, it's crazy, you know. And, and sometimes it's, it's uh, yeah, it does feel 25 years, but then sometimes it just feels like it was yesterday. Do you, do you ever get fed up talking about it? Because it my, must be the first thing. My dad told me one thing in life. He said, when they stop talking about you, you're dead. You know what <laughs> I mean? So, uh, yeah, yeah. no, I never get <clears throat> fed up people. To, uh, listen, everybody has a different story. You know, I'm only yeah. sorry I never wrote a book on people's stories never too late. of my stories. You know, so, yeah, probably, yeah. But I think well, there's such a fascination because there is such a small, tiny amount of the population that go on to represent their country in yeah. any sport. And then yeah. to be at the Olympics, it's such an achievement and an honour. And Absolutely. I suppose we like to live vicariously through, you know, our athletes because yeah. it's not attainable for the rest of us. Well, yeah, I suppose, yeah. And uh, most sports people's dream will be the Olympics, no matter what it is. It's the biggest... W w it was when I started boxing at seven years old, I, I said to my dad, I'm going to win the Olympics. And I told him I'd promise why, them. Why, where did your interest in the Olympics come Again, from? Again, looking, you know, just looking at the Olympic Games and television and things like that. And it was always, you know, air club, during the boxing club, we've had uh, four representations, five people representing in Olympic yeah. Games with Mick Dowell and Philip Sutliff, Paul Griffin, myself and my father being coach in, 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 uh, in Barcelona, Barcelona, sorry. So, you know, we've had five people represent their club uh, going to the Olympics. So it was, it's a kind of continuation of, oh, I want to be there, I want to be there, because obviously Philip Sutliff being there in, in 84 and 80, um, I was the next days coming up at that yeah. stage. At 16, I was saying to myself, I want to be the next one for Drimble. Whatever you know, about so. doing it, Michael, and representing Ireland and getting there and attaining your dream of just getting to the absolutely. Olympics, yeah. still with your dad standing behind you. Yeah, absolutely. Was oh. you know, was, you couldn't write the script any no. better. And I failed in in uh, in Seoul. I, I got beaten in my second fight, and I call I consider that a failure. I didn't win anything, and yeah. I didn't do. I didn't bring home a medal, and. Uh, Fortunately, four years later, I got it right, and obviously even better so having my father in the corner. How did that impact your life when you came back? In terms of did everything go back to normal? Did you want it to go back to normal? Were you sick of people hanging out of you? Not really. No, it was the kind of thing. You know, the Olympic Games is like microwave fame. All of a sudden, it's there. You know, <laughs> it's real fast. You know, it's you don't get a kind of an induction to this. You know, and uh, you either accept it or you don't accept it. And you know, fortunately enough, I had a, 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 I still have a great family around me. My brothers and sisters. Unfortunately, my mum and dad are gone. But you know, there's a level in there as well. I, I, I'm one of ten children, so I'm the seventh child. And you know. If you get above your grade, you know, you quickly put down, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's a typical probably Dublin thing as well. Mm. Um, as a, we're here to uh, promote Dublin uh, 12 today, and yeah. uh, that's where I'm from. I'm from St. Peter's Road, born and bred in St. Peter's Road. And, uh, yeah, if I got beyond my... my my calling, uh, even as an Olympic champion, you were quickly put down, you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and I suppose that's most families. You, know? uh, you mentioned why you're here today. We were just chatting about the importance of, I suppose, boxing clubs are integral to the spirit of the community. And yeah. that's what's happening today. You're kind of giving back, really. Yeah, a great incentive uh, set up by David Moore, the, 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 the branch manager of uh, Walkinstown Bank of Ireland. And a guy who was actually from Dublin 12 as well, he, he born and bred in Bunton Road. So uh, he's back to where... He, I'm not saying where he belongs, but he Back is where he's from, yeah. yeah. And uh, they, they've come up with this great incentive that, you know, there's over 85 businesses, community groups, sports groups, all getting ready now at this moment down in uh, the Assumption School. We have a boxing ring set up as well, so if people want to come and do a bit of pad work and things like that, I'm going to get in against the bank manager later on. So <laughs> I'm going to Pay stop. back for the oh, recession. Absolutely, he's getting thumped. <laughs> he's going to uh, get to be chased. It's, you know, it's a great, great incentive because I think sometimes we've lost that, that word community. You know, that, you know, we're all too busy. You know, we, we live on phones and we live on laptops yeah. and we stick our heads on, on computers every, every part of the day and we've lost that kind of community base, you know, when I was a kid, and I said, "Well, you were kids, you know, there was great things done for us, you know." Yeah. And this is what they're trying to get back here as well in, in Walkerstown, Trimble, Crumlin, um, Ballymount. Uh, I'm going to live somewhere else. Um, Trimble, Walkerstown, Greenhills. You know. We were so, talking earlier on, Michael, to Amanda May, and we were saying about, you know, Ireland as a nation with writers and creative people and yeah. actors. No, to forgive the pun, but we continuously punch above our weight, and it's kind of the same in boxing, like yeah. as far back as eighty, or you know. Where is that coming from? Is it because of events like the ones that you're running, schemes that you're running, it's keeping the interest at 
at grassroots level. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're producing the amount of world absolutely. champions we're producing. Well, today we're you know, like we're showcasing what we do as a Dream a Boxing Club. Like the John Bosco will be there as yeah. well, and local GAA clubs and things like. But we're showing what we do to young young kids. Like boxing is a, a kind of sport that you, you have to kind of pick it rather than that, that picking you. So we're going to show kids today that maybe boxing is for you. You know, some people mm -hmm. don't like being involved in team sports. They're more individual and things like that. So, um, and, you, and you're right as well, like boxing, you know, we have kind of punched above our weight over the last, you know, 30, yeah. 30 years or so, or even more. And that's what boxing does. It's the unsung heroes. It's people who give their, their time you know, freely and not get paid for it. You know, I'm the head coach of Dreamland Boxing Club. I'm there five, six times a week. Uh, if something's not done, they all ring me. Before I come on here, I got 10 phone calls. The, the boxing ring hasn't arrived, you know, yeah, so yeah. that's up to You're me. Sorted you know? So yeah. it's sorted now, but um, <clears throat> it was done for me. My father was my, my unsung hero. Uh, he was my coach. And, and, and it, 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 in all sports in Ireland, it's the, it's the unsung heroes that makes us Balance who we are. Yeah. Uh, Michael, given that you're so heavily involved in the sport still, you could be forgiven for being a bit pessimistic this weekend. I mean, it was announced earlier this week that the uh, IABA had its funding cut by 200,000. What, what are your thoughts on that? You're being very nice there. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm rightly rattled off. I am, like yeah. most people in boxing, because, you know, I can't understand they're the most successful sport. Let's be honest here now, the most successful sport. Uh, in terms of medal counts, in, in, yeah. in, in terms yeah. Yeah, of Olympic medals, yeah, uh, yeah. we've won sixteen medals out of I think thirty medals won or thirty one. I'm not sure, uh, but with that, you know, they, you know, when someone's it's typical Ireland when somebody's down, they kick you, you know. I know, but part uh, of the we, reason we're, we're given, the though, they, they did give a reason that, yeah. you know, they did lose some of the big names like Casey Taylor, Michael Conlon, um, Paddy Barnes to the pro. Circuit, okay. So they lost Wayne McCullough and Paul and Michael Carew in ninety two and ninety three, and the others came in pro. behind them. So th yeah. there's always a conveyor belt yeah. in boxing. Okay, so there always is. But how are you supposed to continue that conveyor belt and produce the future exactly. champions if your funding's cut? Well, you tell me that. You know. So the bottom line is, you know, why you like Great Britain when they didn't produce in two thousand eight, uh, they the boxing team they uh, they didn't cut their funding, they doubled yeah. it. Yeah, they what? doubled their money and then look. Well, they did it with gymnastics as yeah. well. They had never so, had a medal in the look at the previous. Like, what other sports were in court? But, you know? but from your point of view as a coach, what does this cut in funding? What will it yeah. mean? As a club coach, it won't really matter to us okay. at the moment. At the, as a club coach, it won't matter to us because we all have our own boxing clubs. As as a nation, you know, again, it, it doesn't allow us to bring these guys in and girls in to you know to to be on a proper forestry to you know to to. Their, their job is boxing. That's what Katie Taylor's was, Paddy Barnes, Michael Conlon, Kenneth Egan. Their jobs were all to box. <clears throat> you're paid a handsome enough wage. You're not huge. You're not like, like the But you can do it full time yeah, and dedicate can, yourself to and it. And dedicate yourself to it as well. So when you were told to do this, this, and this, you, were t you had to do this and this because it was your job. So what are you, you gonna? What, what can you do about it? Yeah, you, you'd, you'd hope that you know they, they'll, they'll retract it. I don't think they will. Uh, I'm not that naive and stupid enough to think that they'll do that. Um, it's again, it's probably looking for more sponsors for 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 boxing and things like that. Uh, again, it, we're not the most uh, decorated. In that regard, that people come and sponsor us, like yeah. you, you have rugby and you have football and yeah. soccer and GA. And I'm not going to, you know, criticise any of those sports because I love yeah. each and every one of those. Yeah, but sports. then again, you only yeah. have to look at the pay per view. Now yeah. it's it's the biggest sports audiences of the world are watching boxing and MMA. Mm, absolutely, yeah. So, so it's not a, it's it's not a stupid correlation to say to attract sponsors yeah, come and, to come it. And sponsor the Irish Boxing Association, absolutely. But it's it, like people like Michael coming out <laughs> though, and it. you know being at the yeah. fore and being representative and and keeping everyone's minds sort of fresh. Yeah with the boxing scene that, that's currently happening in Ireland. So Absol important. Yeah, well, absolutely. And, and the way it is as well, like, like I'm not criticising any other sports in the sense that, that they weren't put they because yeah, yeah. they didn't produce. You know, yeah, yeah. Well, it's easy for us to say, well, did they win a medal this yeah. time? Doesn't, did no. they win a medal or did That's they win a medal? That's not the point. That's not the point. These people are given their life to represent their country, no matter yeah. what sport it is, you know. They deserve help a chance. Help them out a little bit more, you know. And that's all we're saying, help them out a little bit more. Well, you're keeping the work on today yeah. with your events. The best of luck with it. Hope yeah, you get uh, yeah. And listen, if anybody's around uh, uh, the Assumption School, it's going mm. from 11 o'clock to 4 o'clock. So and you get to see a bank manager get the you know, so, better. And I'm bringing my gold medal down as well, so they can have a look at it as well. So, uh, <laughs> you're bringing your bank manager yeah, down. Absolutely. to <laughs> <laughs> Michael, pleasure to have you. And thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks, guys.